Climate change is such a big deal. It seems like it's responsible for everything these days. Even the coronavirus pandemic, right? <laughs> climate change is a big issue. But no, it is not the only one that we face. And today, our lives across the planet are being upended by a global pandemic, the novel coronavirus that causes the illness known as COVID-19. According to experts, this virus is responsible for the most dangerous pandemic to sweep the planet since the Spanish flu of 1918, over a century ago. Now, the overwhelming majority of us were not around for that one. You have to be over 102 to remember it. But I have a personal story that actually stems from it. That pandemic is responsible for the fact that my last name is Hey Ho. Yes, if it weren't for the Spanish flu, my last name would actually be Scott. But that pandemic orphaned my grandfather. So he was adopted by his aunt, Scott, who married a man named Cecil Hayhoe, and eventually my grandfather added his uncle by marriage as surname to his, leaving our family with the last name Scott Hayhoe, which I still have today. But back to the issue that we're all concerned about today, coronavirus. Was it caused by climate change or not? No, it was not. So does that mean that coronavirus or other emerging viruses or flu-like illnesses or infectious diseases have nothing to do with climate change at all? No, it doesn't mean that either. As with nearly everything we talk about in our Global Weirding episodes, and if you've watched a few, you've heard me say this already, the right question is not, did climate change cause something? It's, did climate change make it worse? Now, it's too early to say anything specific about this pandemic. We just can't. But more generally, in terms of certain types of infectious diseases, as well as emerging viruses and flu-like illnesses, we do know that there can be a connection. So let's dig into that a little bit deeper. First, as you know again if you've watched a few of our Global Weirding episodes, climate change is expected to increase the risk of certain types of infectious diseases like the ones that are carried by vectors. Vectors meaning mosquitoes or ticks, insects or animals that carry the disease. As it gets warmer, their geographic range can expand poleward. And that's why diseases with scary sounding names like Zika and chikungunya are so much in the news today. In a warming climate, many of these vectors, and hence the diseases, are expanding their ranges. And in some cases though, as we found in a study we did for dengue fever, rather than expanding, they're shifting their ranges. So for example, with dengue, we found that more northern areas like Chicago would become more vulnerable in a warmer world, but more southern areas like here in Texas where I live, where we already have dengue, they would become less vulnerable because it would often be too hot for the type of mosquito that carries dengue in the future. Then up in the Arctic, we know that thawing permafrost is releasing viruses and bacteria that have been trapped there for decades and even centuries. One record hot summer just a few years ago, there was an anthrax outbreak in Siberia that was sparked by the defrosting corpse of a reindeer that died from anthrax some 75 years ago. As Swedish microbiologist Birgitta Evengard says, we really don't know what's buried up there. It's like Pandora's box. And climate change also affects pathogens that live in soil. So right here in the U.S. today, we know that climate change is already expanding the range of at least one pretty serious human fungal disease. It's called coccidiodomycosis. Say that again, coccidiodomycosis. When people inhale the spores of this fungi, it causes a flu-like illness that hits immunocompromised people particularly hard, similar to coronavirus, but not as infectious and not the same thing. But the spread of coronavirus today it is not due to climate change because it's not been carried by a vector. It has been carried by us. So climate change is not increasing its geographic range. It did not come from the permafrost. It did not come from the soil. Where did it come from? Well, the novel coronavirus is thought to have originated in bats. A study by Chinese scientists that was published in The Lancet just this past January found that the genome of the coronavirus in bats is 96% identical to the one in humans. So one working theory is that the virus passed from bats through an intermediate host, maybe a pangolin that was for sale at a wild food market, and from there into humans. Disease detectives are still trying to isolate the virus in a wild host to be sure. 
But though coronavirus originated in animals, it is currently being spread from person to person. We are the carriers. So it is going wherever we go. That's why self-isolation is so important to help limit the spread of the disease. But there are some studies that have looked at how human activities, including climate change, could affect diseases that are passed through a process called zoonosis from animals to humans, including viruses like swine flu and SARS and coronavirus. There have also been some studies looking at how climate change can affect influenza seasons that are, you know, flu that's already in the human populations. And these studies do indicate some connections. As you might guess, a lot of these connections are not necessarily good. So first of all, and this should be obvious to many people, though somehow it's not, the more we encroach on and disrupt natural ecosystems, which includes engaging in wildlife trafficking and unhealthy animal agriculture practices, the greater the risk of diseases spilling over from animal populations to humans. As a new WWF Italia report states, pandemics are the boomerang effect of the destruction of ecosystems. So we need to protect human health by preserving biodiversity. It just makes sense. Then, once a virus has already spilled over from animals and is circulating within human populations, climate change can affect its spread and its severity. So, for example, with the normal regular flu, warm winters are already becoming more frequent as climate changes. Here in Texas, as in so many places across North America, winter is actually warming faster than any other season. Now, at first, that sounds like good news, because flu seasons are milder in warmer winters. But what we found is that a milder season makes our human population more vulnerable and possibly less inclined to go get the vaccine as well. So what happens is the next season, we haven't built up our immunity, and it, is, it could start earlier, and the next season after a warmer winter can be much more virulent. It's still too early to say definitively how this new virus will behave in different climates. As a novel virus, scientists are still scrambling to study it and understand it. But one study from scientists at the University of Maryland indicates that this specific virus could spread more effectively in the cooler and less humid conditions of the mid-latitudes as opposed to the tropics. Although for other viruses, it can be the opposite, so you can see it really depends. Then there's the fact that in the mid-latitudes, our regular flu season is seasonal. But as the planet warms, the flu season could end up being year-round, as it already is in many tropical countries. In fact, the worst flu I ever caught was when I lived in Colombia as a child in the summer. Each season, we have different versions of the flu that circulate, and so a longer season makes it harder to administer effective vaccines— since they only work for a matter of months, and it also gives the, vac the virus more time to mutate into a potentially more dangerous strain. And then there's the fact that a warmer climate may decrease our immune response in general. So that would make us more vulnerable to viruses like the flu. So no, climate change is not causing the pandemic. But climate change does affect the background conditions over which all of our diseases grow and spread. We know that the human disruption of natural systems and human-caused climate change are, as the U.S. military calls them, threat multipliers. In other words, they take issues that we're already concerned about today, and what more than our health, and make many of them worse. So if there's one thing that we're learning from this pandemic, it's that everyone and everything in this world is connected and that's why it just makes sense to do everything we can right now to keep each other safe and keep on doing everything that we can to make sure that we're safe from the impacts of climate change in the future as well. Thank you for watching this special episode on the connections between climate change and the coronavirus pandemic. For more, please watch our second episode on how the pandemic is affecting carbon emissions and air pollution, and check out the special episode from our sister show, It's Okay to Be Smart with Dr. Joe Hansen, that explains the latest science and expert advice on what every single one of us can do to help slow the spread of this pandemic.